everybody, welcome back to Australia. I'm here today with two scientists from Utah State University who actually get to study coral reef ecosystems. I want you to meet Trisha and Ed. That's right, Amy, we're marine biologists. Okay, so what does that mean? What's a marine biologist? Well, a marine biologist is somebody who actually studies plants and animals in the ocean. All right. And we love our jobs because we get to visit some amazing places uh, where we actually get to study how these ocean ecosystems work. Today, we're going to take you to one of our favorite places, the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef consists of over 900 islands and 2,900 individual coral reefs, making it the largest coral reef ecosystem in the whole wide world. And remember, coral reefs are important because they provide habitat, or a home, for thousands of different ocean plants and animals. But coral reefs are also important for people, too. They provide something called an ecosystem service, which simply means they give back to people in a big way. Coral reefs provide fish for us to eat, they provide jobs for local people to earn money, and they're barriers for local towns from ocean waves. They help keep our oceans working properly, so keeping them healthy is extremely important. And coral reefs can become unhealthy for many different reasons. And when they do, it's pretty scary for those of us who know just how important they are. Today, we're going to take a close look at one special reef. This reef has become pretty unhealthy and is actually covered in algae. Now remember, corals need certain things to live and grow, just like we do. They need sunlight, clean, shallow water, and just the right water temperature. And they also need other wildlife around them to keep everything in balance. Remember the example of the herbivorous fish, like the parrotfish that eats plants and algae? Without these fish, the algae can grow out of control and eventually take over the reef. When the algae take over, they block the coral underneath from getting sunlight. Without sunlight, the coral polyps can't produce the energy they need to live and grow. The coral become unhealthy and can eventually die, which is bad for the coral reef and all the other animals that call it their home. And there are many different things that can cause a coral reef to become unhealthy. One of the biggest threats to our coral reefs is global climate change. Our oceans are getting warmer, and in some places too warm for coral to survive. There are lots of coral reefs on our planet. The ones you see popping up here in red are just a few examples but all of them are important. But today, we're gonna to work with Trisha, Ed, and their science crew to gather evidence for why the coral reef in this one area, this very small part of the Great Barrier Reef, is unhealthy and not doing very well. So, Trisha, we know that this one spot isn't doing, isn't doing very well. It's kind of covered in algae and it doesn't look very healthy. How do you think we start to try and figure out what's happening, what's going on? Well, the first thing we can do is think about what coral, just like the ones in this touch tank, actually need to live and be healthy. Okay. And a great way to do that is to try to find a healthy reef and compare it to our unhealthy reef. When we compare the two, then we can hopefully figure out what is going on in our unhealthy reef. Okay, okay. Hi, Ed. And I know just the place. Yeah. There's an area not far from here, the coral there is super healthy and thriving, and there's fish and living creatures everywhere. Hmm. That's a great idea, Ed. And I have an idea. So when we go to our unhealthy coral reef, it seems that there's not a lot of fish there. But I remember when we snorkel on that healthy reef that Ed has found, there is a lot of fish there that eat algae. So maybe it's the lack of those algae-eating fish on our unhealthy reef that's causing all that algae to grow. So it sounds like you're coming up with a guess about what might be happening, is that right? Yes, but it's called a hypothesis. Okay, so, so what's a hypothesis? Well, a hypothesis is basically just an idea or a guess about why something might be happening based on something you've seen or observed in nature. Okay, so what's your hypothesis about what might be going on? Well, I hypothesize there'll be fewer herbivorous fish in the area that is unhealthy, where there is more algae, compared to the healthy area. Great. So, so how do we go about collecting evidence that might show whether we made a good guess or not? Well, we found our two different study areas. One that looks unhealthy, and one we think is healthy. In other words, we think there could be differences in the amount of coral reef that is covered in algae between our two areas. Let's call our unhealthy area, area number one, and our healthy area, area number two. 
We think the reason for that difference could be because there are fewer herbivorous fish to eat all of the algae in the unhealthy area, area number one. So if our herbivorous fish hypothesis is true, then we should be able to go out to our two different areas and count differences in fish. Now we need to head into the water and actually see how much of each coral reef is covered in algae. That way we can see if there's a difference, an actual difference in coral reef health between the two areas. And then we can go out and count the fish to see if there's a difference in the number of fish between our unhealthy reef and our healthy reef. To do that, we're going to have to head into the water. <laughs> now this is the fun part of the job, the part that scientists enjoy the most. We've come up with a question and we've made a guess about the answer to that question. And that guess is called a hypothesis. Now we get to head out into nature and go find evidence or clues either for or against that hypothesis. <laughs> 